as one just call it out. Authentic. 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 A bunch of people for authentic. Passionate. Passionate. Authentic. Passionate. Collaborative. Collaborative. Grateful. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Humorous. Come on. Give, give me, throw me a bone. Guys. Grateful. <laughs> what else? Diligent. Diligent. Thank you. Respectful. Wow, that's going to be a really creative spelling diligent today. Um, sorry, you heard another one over Respectful. here? Respectful. Respectful, thank you, that's a great one. Anything else? Okay, so here's all the things that you don't think salespeople are. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Like when you think about your worst vision of a salesperson, not authentic, not passionate, maybe pushy. Uh, not collaborative, not grateful, not diligent, not respectful. Does that make sense? Okay. So, if you are all those things during a sales process, which we're calling the pre-contract phase of the coaching, these are all positive spaces. In other words, people are more likely to make up reasons to buy from me when I'm being respectful. Does that make sense? Because when I'm being respectful, I'm listening to their needs, I'm making sure that whatever it is I'm su suggesting is actually targeted for that. It makes it, it's way easier to buy something from a respectful person. Now if I'm not ultimately interested in coaching, that's fine. I'm ultimately gonna say no. But if I'm in that middle space where I've got an objection, where I'm in that maybe, and I'm in the conversation with you, being respectful and diligent in all these things are gonna be the difference between that person finding a reason to move forward with me and not. Okay, let's go to the bottom half of the sheet. A slightly less attractive set of words there. And the task here is to pick the trait, the single, the trait that is most offensive to you. Deceitful. Deceitful. Greedy. Deceitful. Greedy. Self-absorbed. Self-absorbed. That's one of my favorites. Exploitive. I'm still at self-absorbed. What's after? Exploitive. Exploitive. Manipulative. Hypocritical. Manipulative. Exploitive. Got that one. Uh, okay. Hypocritical. Yeah. Superficial. Superficial. Dismissive. Dismissive. Okay, that's good. So, that's negative space. So, if a salesperson comes at you, in one of these places, are you less likely to buy from them? Oh, yes. Take deceitful, for example. So I'm in front of a, a, a person, and deceitful, I mean, that person isn't saying, I'm going to lie to you in order to get your business. But doesn't it feel, like you know what it feels like to be in the presence of someone deceitful? It's just, it's off-putting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it creates a little bit of negative space. So. So first of all, the person's already in negative space because they've got a problem they don't necessarily know how to solve. That's why they're in the conversation with you. So, can you imagine if I was a coach that was coming at it from a deceitful place? Um, the one I pick on that is arrogant, by the way. So, one of the things that's true for me is that uh, even in the last 50 minutes, I probably spent about 20% of my time going to my arrogant place. For me, it's rooted in feelings of not being good enough and, and that insecurity place that I go. So when I go to my arrogant place, my clients invent reasons not to buy from me. So I remember last, uh, maybe four years ago, I just did a fresh price increase. I was feeling pretty confident. And I got a referral to a really high-end entrepreneur. And I, and I go to his office, and I deliver this wicked this coaching sample. And he's on the other side of the table going, this coaching is great. This is exactly what I want. And I hadn't talked about price yet, and I knew that was coming, because in order to send an invoice, you actually have to have that conversation at some point. And so I, I put it off right to the last, because this is the first guy that I was trying my new price at, and I was feeling really insecure. So he says, I said, so we need just to, just to have a conversation about you know, price. And uh, he says, great. Like, he's excited about this. He just needs to know the number to put into the check, right? And I said, it's five of them. Mumbled, I went instantly red, I lost eye contact. I went, and you know what he said next? Oh, 
the soft to think about it then. I didn't hear from him again. And because I was in my arrogant place, I didn't have the kind of the emotional resources at that moment to switch myself out and challenge it. I had just established a huge value with this person in a two hour coaching session and then threw it away because I went down. I went down to my negative place. Now, I'm not overjoyed necessarily to talk about being arrogant. I really am not because it's not one of my biggest weaknesses. I don't like it in myself. However, I recognize that I do go there. And when I announced to my friends that I was starting to work on arrogance, like none of them were surprised. <laughs> was like, okay. So all of these things that you picked say something about you that you probably don't want to, you know, that it's not very pleasant to hear. So I just, um, I'm going to single you out because you went first. Who said deceitful? And who agrees with deceitful? Okay. So do I think Joseph is a bald-faced liar? No. Just bald. <laughs> That's good. Um, now, what are some of the forms of deception that happen to everybody other than just out and out lying? They don't tell the whole truth. Don't, help, don't tell the whole truth. Omit. I don't know. A, a lie of omission. Emotional dishonesty. Emotional dishonesty. An ulterior motive. An ulterior motive. What about lies I tell to myself? There's things that I, there's self-deceptions, there's these little white lies, all of that sort of stuff. So for Joseph, there's something that Joseph needs to learn about Joseph. So I'm going to suggest, and this is kind of a bold thing, there is a particular way in which you are lying right now. That if you come to terms with that, and you show up in a, in a sales process, you come in not at negative space, you come in at positive space. Which one did you pick that was the opposite of this? Authentic. Well, okay. Doesn't it make sense? It's like a set, authentic versus really, you know, that poking and prodding that we do and peeling of the onions. And then we get to uh, have a conversation about different ways to think of things. So the idea is that when my thinking is at this level, I'm stuck. I don't know how to create a solution for me such that I get to my next level. My job as a coach during the sales process is to elevate the thinking so that I see solutions. So when people see solutions in my presence, they go, hey, I like having this guy around. I think I might actually pay that money that he's saying. So in the selling process, we, we deal with stuck people, and they come out activated. It's really important. So the next idea I'd like to propose, because the, the, one of the themes of our conferences is the being level of coaching. And I think this is the, the coolest kind of quantum mechanics kind of idea that it is going. And uh, again, Greg and I have been kind of experimenting with this in the last couple of months. The source of the objection is the coach. So when I don't feel good about myself and I'm in my insecure, arrogant place, I always, almost always, get a price objection. Okay? When I'm not feeling good about me, people say, wow, your coaching is expensive. When I feel not good enough, people say, wow, your coaching sure seems expensive. When I'm really stressed out about time, and I think I, there's no possible way I can fit you know, another thing in my day, people tend to say, wow, you know, I'm really stressed out and overwhelmed. I don't think I can fit this new activity into my day. What's going on with me tends to show up on the other side. Kind of, it's, I think it's kind of a cool quantum mechanics idea. It's energetic. If I'm in a negative space, am I going to be hugely surprised if my client follows me there? Because they're already in a negative space because they're stressed out. That's why they're even having the conversation with me. So if I put myself into a positive space, the person may follow me. In other words, negative energies down here, my thinking, positive energies up here. If I take my prospect up here, they will want to follow me because it's more fun up here. Wallowing in a problem is not fun, it's stressful. Talking about solutions and getting into action is fun. That's why we do this work as coaches, is to get people into that conversation. So, next idea, which is kind of similar to that. And I love this, I think it's kind of snacky. The objection that my prospect has to my coaching is the objection I have to selling. <laughs> 